Lumbar spondylolisthesis is also a condition that impacts the uh, space available for the nerves. In the lower back, um, spondylolisthesis can occur, which is a shift of uh, one vertebrae forward on another when the joints that connect those bones uh, become degenerated is the most common reason for that slippage to occur. The consequence of that slippage is that the space available for the nerves that are traversing uh, through the canal there becomes inadequate. The nerves become pinched, essentially, and patients can get significant back pain and leg pain, particularly when they stand and walk. The um, traditional treatments um, for this that are non-surgical involve anti-inflammatory medications, sometimes physical therapy, particularly to target the core musculature to help people walk more effectively can be helpful. Other treatments, including injection of epidural steroids, have been used frequently, which can provide very good short-term uh, reduction in patients' nerve symptoms. And when surgery is required, the traditional treatment is to do what's called a laminectomy, which means removing the parts of the spine that are causing that canal to be narrow, and then also doing a fusion, which means getting those two vertebrae to mend together so that the slippage can't get worse in the future and cause the condition to come back again. And the laminectomy infusion uh, surgery has uh, minimally invasive um, aspects of it too, which can be done uh, with less morbidity to the soft tissues and a quicker recovery as well. And I'm a big proponent of uh, performing those types of minimally invasive operations for patients when they really do need them. The outcomes for that type of minimally invasive uh, surgery are really quite gratifying for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, in, in the short term, uh, patients get out of the hospital more quickly. The reason is that they have less back pain. And when patients don't have significant back pain, they're able to get out of bed more easily, they're able to move more easily, and that is uh, one of the best uh, short-term uh, benefits. There's also significantly less blood loss and probably less uh, surgical complications associated with the, the minimally invasive surgery. In the long term, however, is where I think the real benefits of minimally invasive uh, fusions happen. And the reason is that these minimally invasive procedures preserve as much of the normal tissues as possible. And so the muscles that support the spine, the core musculature, and the paraspinal musculature remains relatively normal. So in the long term, the risk of having other spine problems is reduced. And I think that is really where the, the significant benefit of, of minimally invasive surgery lies. Mm -hmm.